War Stories with Dave Grega, episode two. <laughs> all right, so let's get into this because these things uh, get pretty long. First of all, I want to say there's two reasons why I'm doing this. One is because just uh, as time goes on, you lose detail in, in your memory uh, in little bit by little bit. And I want to kind of uh, get these a bunch of these stories out so just so that I have them for down the road. And two, uh, war is uh, an extreme thing, and it tends to highlight everything by contrast. You know, everything's more extreme and more evident. So what happens is uh, a lot of these lessons, these life lessons that you can learn anywhere, um, tend to really stick and uh, really uh, get taken home and, um, and therefore utilized for good uh, in life after war. And so what I want to do is tell these stories and have a lesson that I learned from from these stories uh, so that, you know, maybe it could benefit you in some way. And it may not be profound, but um, as long as it's uh, increasing uh, the quality of life, then for yourself and for others, then great. So this is a story about uh, a raid that we did one night in, in the neighborhood we were in. I was the guy with the battering ram, the dynamic entry specialist, and so it was my job to, uh, usually compounds have a, an outer wall with a gate and then the house or the compound or whatever you want to call it and so it was my job to get over that wall first and go open the gate uh, and let everyone else in and then if the door was locked I would uh, uh, go ahead and use the battering ram and fix that problem um, so the story starts with uh, I'll set the scene so it's late at night well after midnight uh, there's a curfew in the city at this time, so it's very quiet. It's eerily quiet. You can hear do some dogs barking. The wind wasn't, doesn't really blow a lot at night, a lot of the year there. It's kind of very quiet. Um, actually, it's kind of peaceful. It's sort of ironic, uh, but it's very peaceful. And you have a lot of time to sort of go inward and reflect what you're about to do. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, anything can happen. They could be sitting inside the home waiting for you. Maybe they got tipped off. Maybe they hear you uh, or not, um, but you don't know. So you're kind of just preparing for everything, going through your job responsibility. And we're getting close and we're driving. And again, this is total blackout, no lights, only night vision. Um, everything is quiet. All right. Until you hit that door, you don't, you make as little noise as possible. So you want to maintain the element of surprise. You know, anything to gain advantage in war and in life, but especially in war, uh, it's potentially life-saving. So something that uh, you want to try to do. So the vehicles are driving very slow, and I'm in the back. I got my battering ram and my rifle between my legs and my breech kit on, night vision down, and get the call that you know we're about a minute out. And for some reason, I was inspired to take my glove off. Because it's sort of surreal. You know, I was 19 years old. It's just sort of surreal, the whole thing, right? I, and for some reason, I looked at my hand. And I kept thinking, and I was just looking at my hand. I was like, just staring at my hand. And all of a sudden, I started to think. Because, because of how surreal the situation was, you know, you, you feel like, is this really happening? Am I really about to go do this? Like, this seems like a, not a game, but this, this can't be me, right? Other people do this kind of stuff. Like, this is something you see in a movie or a, a video game, right? And now here I am, a, you know, a 19 year old kid uh, about to go uh, do this. And, uh, and so I think I was just kind of looking at my hand because I wanted to see something that I recognized. It was me, kind of like pinching yourself. It was like my, the way of like identifying, like, yep, that's my hand. I guess I am really here, and I am about to do this. And so as I was looking at my hand, there's a – you probably can't see it on here, but there's a little um, triangular-looking uh, scar on the finger right here. And I noticed it. And then on the back side, there's some scars on my knuckles. And I noticed those going back and forth and looking and all of a sudden all these memories started flooding in from when I got these scars when I was a kid they're both from when I was a little kid maybe in second or third grade uh, or even younger 
Uh, the one on the fingers, I, I was an idiot and put my finger under this uh, little broken piece of metal on a basketball hoop and someone came and did a slam dunk and it literally just like punched a hole in my finger. And the metal, little piece of metal was kind of triangular shaped and so it just and then on this side, I was an idiot, and I ran into a parked car while speeding on my bike downhill, uh, racing somebody, and uh, which is actually kind of funny, um, and split my knuckles open. And so there you go, right? So I, all of a sudden, these, all these memories. And so then that started me on this whole thing. All these memories just from my childhood started flooding back. And I remember grabbing on those swing and seeing my hand. I remember accepting my eighth grade uh, graduation diploma. And grabbing my hand. I remember holding the hand of uh, my first girlfriend. I remember um, uh, just all types of things like that. All of a sudden, these memories that involved my hand started pop popping through my head. And I found this relief from it because I was kind of feeling pretty isolated. I was kind of feeling I didn't even know, like I couldn't even believe that this was me. And it helped ground me. I guess it made me realize that the people and the places, the things that we do in life, all right, shape who we are and, and, and who we become, okay? And it's all just a lot of little things. All of our experiences mold us slightly as we go through life. Okay, so all of the things that my hand had touched, essentially, all the experiences that I was there for during my lifetime resulted in me, who I am at that moment, up to that point. The guy sitting in the vehicle in this case, about to go on this raid. And so in a way, all those experiences that I was thinking of, okay, where I saw my hand there, which basically just meant that I was there, my physical body was there in that moment, having that experience. That experience is me. It is me because you are um, a result of all the things that you've been ex exposed to, all the experiences that you've had in life. And so each one of these things is a small part of you in a way. And it helped me realize that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't alone, that I carried with me because all of the things and people that I've been in contact with shaped me and created who I am at that moment, that I carried them with me in a way, you know, that this was the same hand that, that, that was there, present for all of those things. And all of those things were me and I am the sum of them. I am the sum of my experiences and those experiences are with me because they are me. They shaped who I am. They created who I was at that very moment in time. And so it made me feel a connection between all of those people and all of those places and experiences and me right now. And it really grounded me and it made me, it gave me some context and it made me feel like I wasn't alone. Like It made me feel connected, and that helped me greatly um, on that raid that night and, and on future raids. So, um, yeah, that's the lesson, I guess, is that um, what we need to understand is that sometimes we can feel alone, we can feel lost or even like we're in some sort of dream right something that's just so surreal right that can, can this really be happening to me is this real life you know we feel like we're getting blown with the wind and we really we're not grounded we don't feel grounded um, and this can be unsettling but a way to combat that is uh you know try taking a look at your hand but you don't necessarily need to do that but just try to remember Think about who you are and think about the fact that you are all of the experiences that you've had up to that point. And that in a way, those things are with you. Those experiences, those people, those moments are with you because they are you. You have been shaped by them. You have been created essentially by them over time, molded. 
and there's a bigger picture there. You're, you're, you're not alone. Um, and it feels comforting to know that you always have that with you. You always have that connection to others with you. And it uh, gives you sort of a little bit of courage and confidence to go take on uh, the world, to, to reground yourself, regroup, and then go attack the day, to not feel so isolated. You're not alone. You are the sum of all your experiences. And that means something. Think about what that means. Think about all those experiences. and Realize that they are you and you are them. And that's a comforting thing. All right, guys. Till the next war story. Cheers.